Great throw to the camera last time. I thought I'd bring you back to the stage in better fashion. It's obviously Kevin Van Oort here on the stage at the GameSpot Stage Show. I'm here with uh, Graham Wright and Eric Simonich. We are going to look at Crackdown 2. I'm excited. I know you're excited to bring it to the stage show. Um, show us what we're going to be seeing today. Uh, what we're going to show you today is the demo that's coming out on Monday. Um, so what we've got here is what is known as the tactical location. The tactical location a part of the main backbone of the story arc in the game. Basically what's happened is from the first crackdown, uh, which was set, this one set 10 years after that, uh, one of the final missions that you did in Crackdown 1 was to take out a scientist who was in the research building. When that happened, you accidentally released the freak virus into the city. What's happened since then is the freak virus is uh, mutated and it's spread throughout the citizens. Uh, the, the virus is mutated to the point where the citizens are actually allergic to sunlight. So during the day, the freaks um, retreat underground to these huge underground layers that they've built. So the cell here, what they, um, they are out during the day, and then you've got the freaks at night. So the freaks, um, with them being allergic to sunlight, the agency have set up something called Project Sunburst. This is a network of UV bombs, basically, that you have to activate and detonate, and then that'll wipe out the freaks from the city once and for all. So the cell here, however, they believe that the agency is hiding an antidote, so they want the agency to not kill all the freaks. They want to try and save them, return them to humanity. So here, what's happened is the cell have captured part of the Project Sunburst, and you've basically got to take it back. So Eric there just eliminated all the cell in the tactical location, so that's now back in the hands of the peacekeepers. So he's gonna to go to the first absorption unit now, activate it, um, and you'll see how, how Project Sunburst works. Now powers so, were a big thing in the original crackdown. Yes. Um, I'm curious to know, are we gonna see the same ones return? Another? Is there anything new that you've got in store in that regard? Um, the leveling system, uh, you've still got agility, firearms, strength, explosives, uh, and driving. What we've done is improved the driving a lot because what people would find is that there was so much fun jumping from roof to roof like that that was what Crackdown was. Ridiculous over the top powers, uh, throwing things around, blowing things up. So we've made the driving element a lot more satisfying this time to level up. Um, you'll have literally floods of freaks in the streets. It's freaks everywhere and you can just mow through them, uh, destroy them. The handling's uh, been, uh, the handling's been looked at quite a lot, so it's the cars are really, really nice to drive now. Plus you have a much bigger range of vehicles, not only the standard vehicles, but if you annoy the cell, or if you go after, if you kill civilians, the peacekeepers are going to come after you, but they're going to send out vehicles with mounted weapons on them, so you'll be driving around and you're going to be being chased by the cell driving uh, vehicles with rocket launchers, and there's just rockets firing everywhere, it's absolute chaos. And then if you get one of those, then that's so much fun. Now moving around was actually one of my favorite things to do in the original Crackdown. And you've already touched a little bit on the uh, the jumping and things like that. Yes. I'm curious to know as, as well, like one of my favorite things to do was like racing challenges in the yes. original Crackdown. Are we going to see the return of those kind of challenges and the other types as well? Yeah. We've got the rooftop races, the driving challenges. What we've got now as well is one of the new features. It's called the wingsuit. When you level up your agility, you actually gain the ability to fly. So you can go up in a helicopter really high or you can climb a building, jump off, and then you'll activate the wingsuit and you can hover, you can dive and then pull back up. Uh, we've uh, done wingsuit challenges where there'll be stunt rings in the sky that you've got to fly through. So that's a really nice bit of end game content to reward people for that. So people are really going to like it. It's really good fun. So one of the, my favorite weapon in Crackdown 2 is the UV shotgun. So this was made by the agency with the freaks being allergic to sunlight. It just absolutely decimates any of the freaks that get in its way. But not only that, if you shoot things that aren't the freaks, um, it'll like propel them away from you. So what he's using here is the mag grenades as well. This is another new gadget that we've put in. Uh, you place one on an object and then one somewhere else. And then whatever is lightest will get pulled towards the other one. You can detonate them as well, so they're multi-purpose. But you can basically create these huge spider webs of vehicles going up buildings to help you climb. Um, you can attach a vehicle to a lamppost and create a mace weapon. So you can actually make weapons out of things in the game. So it's just giving people more toys. 
we're, we don't like to refer to ourselves as a sandbox game. We like to call ourselves a toy box. Just giving people more and more toys, things to blow, have fun. Now we're seeing the we're seeing the campaign here. Yeah. Um, obviously, in the original game, co-op was a big thing. Yes. Um, people want to know, including Ben Lo uh, Ben Linus in Iowa. Um, will we see co-op again, and are we going to see any uh, new multiplayer modes? Yes, um, co-op, we've actually increased the number of players to four-player co-op, so you can jump in with four of your friends and take on the whole campaign. What one person, uh, the person that hosts you play in their game, it's drop in, drop out, and you can take your experience from playing with them over into your campaign, so you're not going to lose anything from that. Uh, plus, one of the other new things we've added is online orbs. So we've got two new types of orbs, they're online orbs, you collect them with your friends as you play. Um, other multiplayer modes that we have now is PvP, so we have Deathmatch and Rocket Tag. Rocket Tag is so much fun, it's absolutely frantic, it's literally what it sounds like. You've got 16 people all armed with huge rocket launchers, and then one person um, will get the Rocket Tag orb, and they've got to keep a hold of that for as long as possible. And while that's happening, they've got the UV shotgun, but all of their 15 players have rocket launchers. So you'll be running along and there'll just be rockets flying past your head, explosions going off everywhere. It's great fun. Now, Katie Wilson, she wants to know about the city, about the world. How huge is this place? Um, I can't give you actual dimensions, but it's bigger than the first game. Because not only now do you climb up, because the freaks of Borrowed Underground created these huge caverns, but you travel down now and go in the, under the city, so it is a lot bigger. It adds more variety of terrain as well. And, and speaking of variety, we see a lot of, we see a lot of shooting here. Um, what other kinds of activities will be taking place besides just obviously the shooting, the moving around? One thing I like to do uh, in the original was uh, get the collectibles that are, that are hanging about. Um, what other kinds of side, side activities will be taking part in? Well, the orbs, as I already said about the online orbs, we've got those, but we've got another new type of orb, the renegade orbs and they're really, really evilly good. They're gonna uh, wind a lot of people up, but in a good way, they're gonna love them. Basically, we've got the agility renegade orbs and the driving renegade orbs, and they actually run away from the player, so they don't wanna be caught by you, so you're gonna have your work cut out to get those. So these are sentient orbs, yes. is basically what, okay. And uh, let's see what else. Our, our readers are sending in so much stuff I can barely keep up. Um, Nathan Style from Biloxi asking about customization. Now you you showed um, you showed um, some weapon customization there earlier. I think uh, what kinds of customization will we see? Well, obviously, we'll be we'll be leveling ourselves up. But what else can we do to uh, to customize our character? Um, the customization really comes in how you use the toys that we give you. You can do anything you want with it. You can if you use the mag grenades that were there earlier. You can summon a, a call in a tank from the agency and you can get a helicopter and you can, then you can stick a mag to the bottom of the helicopter then stick it to the tank, turn it into a huge wrecking ball, get your friends in the tank, you'd be flying around in the helicopter. So it's more about giving people everything in the game and letting them do what they want with it. That's how we do the customization. Now, Calum O'Sullivan in Durham, England, um, and, and it's a good question actually, Crackdown 1 had a system where you had to defeat lesser villains in order to get to uh, to a kingpin. Um, I'm curious to know if, it, if that system's going to carry over into Crackdown 2. Um, well, it's, it differs slightly in that you have to activate the absorption units, which are at the set where the cell are gone, and once you activate three of those, then a relevant beacon will be deployed into the heart of a freak lair, and then you can go in and take out the freaks in that lair. So it, it's kind of similar in that way. Now, what's what's going on here in the game right now? Obviously, uh, this this car is a little beat up. Yes. Um, um, he's just leveled up there. What he's, he's drove into another one of the tactical locations here. So this is the old uh, high rise. As you can see, it's all been walled off. The cell have really cemented themselves deep inside there. So what you've got to do is, uh, if he activates that, then that will trigger the peacekeeper drop off. So you've got to make the area safe for the peacekeepers to come in so you can take over the area. Now, good question from, uh, from Magnum Michelson. Um, wanting to know, in terms of the story, is he going to have to know what was going on in Crackdown 2 to understand, or in Crackdown 1 to understand what's going on here? Um, no, we pretty much fill in 
for people who haven't played the first game. Obviously, people are like, going to really enjoy it if they have played the first game, but they'll really enjoy it if they haven't. The beauty about Crackdown is it's about creating your own experiences. It's not taking people down one set route. It's literally giving people everything that we've put in the game and letting them do what they want. So if, if you haven't played the first Crackdown, I really advise you go and do it because it's a fantastic game. But if not, don't worry about that at all. And a couple, uh, I see a, a few questions here about the, the amount of gore in the game. Apparently, people like violence. I didn't know this myself. Right. I was going to Crackdown 2 thinking that this was just, you know, kind of a cute puzzle game, but, but apparently people want to know about violence. Is there going to be a lot of wonderful blood splattering around? Um, yeah, if you, uh, the best example of it is when you drive through the freaks and any of the freaks that you hit in your vehicle will just explode on impact. The, the people do as well. When you get to the highest level, level five, you can do the ground pound, and if you ground pound right on top of each of people, that'll make them explode as well. Um, MP, I, MP, I don't know what your name stands for, but I'm sure it's gotta be awesome to just go by initials. Um, but uh, how many enemies will we see on the screen at once? And um, if, you, if you leave and re-enter the zone, like in Crackdown 1, will, will, will they reappear? Um, uh, on screen at once, you've literally got almost a thousand uh, in some areas. Uh, the freaks, if you kill them, uh, they will regenerate. And if you kill too many, they'll start sending bigger, badder freaks after you. You've got the scroungers that are out at the moment here. But if you tick them off too much, they're going to send the more advanced freaks, the reapers. We'll have two different types of those. We've got the strength reapers, which can throw cars up, objects throw them at you. They, if they get you on the ground, you're in trouble. And you've got the agility reapers as well. They're the ones that can jump really high like the agent and they'll chase you across rooftops. Now, Joshua Moore actually, actually asked a really good question. Um, what was the thought process behind putting uh, a, a zombie type character in the game as opposed to the, to the human enemies um, that, that were all over the first game? Well, it goes back to the, the first game in that you actually released this freak virus into the city. It was one of the objectives in the first game. You had to take out the scientist in the Shy Gen area. And when you did that, you released all of his experiments in the city. So it comes back to the first game. A lot of people, too, um, apparently they liked, um, they liked the DLC. Um, they want to know, especially Nathan Style, who sent the message about 20 times, he wants to know, is there going to be a Keys to the City type DLC for Crackdown 2? Nathan, there is going to be DLC, but we're not talking about it at the moment. But when we do, you won't be disappointed. You'll be happy. Now, a lot of options right here. You can call down the, the helicopter. Yes. Um, how many different vehicles are we going to see? I see a lot on the street, that's for sure. Um, the vehicles, there's such a range. Um, the peacekeeper vehicles have increased now. So you've got the helicopter now. So the helicopter really opens up a new method of exploration for the player. You've got the agency tank, the agency SUV. You've got the agency buggy, piece of car. Then the civilians, there's a range of civilian vehicles. And then the cell vehicles. You've got things now like a battle bus, which is just made for four-player co-op. One person drives, and then you've got another three people on mounted weapons on the back of the truck. So you can be in with three of your friends, one driving around. Someone can have a rocket launcher. Someone else can have two, uh, two other people can have two machine guns. It's absolute chaos. So there's a, a huge amount of vehicles now. Lots of questions coming in. It's almost impossible to uh to keep up. Um, Landon Meyer, Lethbridge, obviously vehicle's a big thing in the original Crackdown. We're glad to hear that uh, vehicle handling is gonna be, gonna be far improved. Um, Landon wants to know about the, about the cars even more. Um, the, the cars evolved the higher level you got. Um, how, exactly what are the changes gonna be in the vehicles between the, the lower level and the higher level as you, as you level up your driving? The vehicles, the, the best way to describe it is with the agency vehicles. You, as you level up, you'll get access to different types of vehicles. So eventually when you get to level five and you're the, um, the highest level agent, you'll be able to get the agency tank, which absolutely destroys anything in its way. You drive through, plow everything down, and the helicopter as well. So basically it will give you the best version of the car, uh, or the vehicle, sorry, when you unlock it. So the progression is that you get bigger, badder vehicles, more uh, mounted weapons, things like that.
a good question too from Tiago Martins in Portugal. Um, um, multiplayer obviously big. Um, wants to know about split screen and also about online servers. Everybody wants to know are online servers going to be dedicated? Um, I believe we'll have. Um, I'm not actually sure about that, to be yeah. honest. Um, I would, you'd have to ask uh, one of the uh, code guys about that. Um, but we don't have split screen in the game because we felt that it was um, we wanted to give people the best Xbox Live experience possible. So we really focused with time and effort into making live the best that we could for people. And I'm going to take one last reader question. Yep. Um, Jamel Roberts in London, in the UK. What kind of different radio stations will there be when we're driving around? Oh, we've got um, a range of different music. Um, yeah, absolutely huge amount. I mean, obviously, like the first game, the, the soundtrack was fantastic, and we're, we really haven't held back on this one either. We've got such a range. We've, we have things like REM in the game. Uh, we're really, really proud of the soundtrack. And for, for you guys, what's the most important thing you want us to know about Crackdown 2 that maybe we haven't covered already today? Um, Crackdown 2 is bigger, badder, more explosions. Just get in there, play co-op. Like, four-player co-op is so much fun. Uh, I guarantee that when you're all doing a free play together and you've got UV shotguns, you'll just be so tempted to turn to your friends and shoot them, see them going flying across. Uh, it's just so much fun, and we've just made it even more fun by increasing the amount of people that can play on live. And what we're seeing, Xbox 360 exclusive. Xbox 360 exclusive. The demo that's being played now is out on Monday on the 21st and then the game ships in the US on July the 6th and then everywhere else July 9th. So get to work, agents. Very excited, we're excited. We know you must be excited to see Very your game excited. finally come out. Yes. It's looking great. Eric Graham, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, come, come back anytime. Um, we're gonna go back out to the stage, um, out to the show floor, I should say. I don't know what's going on, I can't hear anything in my ear, but I bet you it's really good. Take it away.